The first thing to make sure the families understand is that there's not a lot of information out there and that through working with uh, Helping Hands for GAND and our laboratory and our clinic, uh, we can provide them with some information that I don't think is uh, able to be uh, given to them from any other source. Most of you have heard of one of these two studies. Uh, one's called exome sequencing, which is a study where you're sequencing most of the coding regions in a patient's genome at the same time. Uh, it's equivalent to studying 20,000 genes simultaneously. Where a high density SNP array is something where you're looking at the structure of the DNA and you're looking for pieces of DNA that are missing or duplicated. And so together, one evaluates the structure and the other evaluates the sequence. And we oftentimes will do the SNP array first and then so, because it's easier and, then, and faster and then subsequently do exome sequencing if it's not uh, uh, productive on the SNP array. So exome sequencing, uh, basically what they're doing is you take all the exons in your genome or in your total DNA and you sequence those individually. Uh, and they're the important part because they're the ones, like I said here, they're the ones that code for the protein. So in any case, exon, exome sequencing is looking at 20,000 genes and only looking at these exon parts of them. Uh, the exome consists of about 1% of your total genome. So if you have 100% of your DNA, which is your total genome, the exome is only gonna be 1%. And the reason why they focus in on this 1% is about 80% of known genetic disorders are in that coding region. And so that's the most important part of the genome. Uh, many of you probably got a report back that said uh, it's a de novo truncating nonsense mutation in GATA D2B. And then there was a few uh, letters here and a few letters here and numbers. And, and basically I want to go through what this means. So first of all, de novo. Um, this means that when they looked at the child's DNA, they saw this change, but when they looked at mom and dad, they didn't see the change, okay? And uh, one of the reasons why they don't see that is because they're testing mom and dad's blood, and if, say, the variant occurred uh, spontaneously in, say, the sperm or the egg, or in the embryo when the embryo was one or two cells, uh, that's not going to be in the, pre in, in, in the blood of either parent. And so it's de novo. Novo means new, okay? The next thing you probably got was uh, this, these two uh, things. One says C610, C to T, and the other says P. So C stands for cDNA, which is, I'm not going to go into, but it's basically measuring the messenger RNA. Um, and the P stands for protein. So when you have a, a cDNA change, it's, it's going to be a nucleotide, and then that nucleotide encodes for a specific amino acid. Now, many of you got reports back that said it was a truncating mutation, and it was either a frame shift or a nonsense. I'm going to talk about nonsense right now. So as you can see here, what's happened is this code here encodes for an amino acid here. These three nucleotides encode for a specific amino acid. In this case, it's glutamine. And if you change this, it can cause a different amino acid to get put in there, or it can, cause what's, it can, it can encode what's called a stop codon. And a stop codon is back here. So, so if this is the normal protein here, the the, the body needs to know when to stop making it. In other words, it, I always tell people it's just stupid molecules. They don't have a brain. They, it has, you have to have some sort of code to tell it to stop. And, and so this TAA, and there's some other ones, uh, encode a stop codon. And that, that puts the, the tail on that protein. So a nonsense mutation is when you have a, a codon here that encodes for glutamine that gets changed. And in this case, uh, the T gets inserted there. And then that, as you can see, is a stop codon, and so it truncates the protein. In other words, you lose all of this tail end of the protein. Frame shift is, is a little important, too, in that, as you can see here, we're looking at three of these nucleotides, and each one of these three uh, encodes a different amino acid, okay? Um, in this particular situation, we've got uh, 
uh, cDNA that at, um, at nucleotide 833, there was a G deleted. So that's this G here. And what happens is that gene gets deleted, and now everything gets pushed over one, all right? And when that happens, it changes the amino acids that are being sequenced. And usually when that happens, uh, a stop codon gets placed somewhere down the line. So you add three, four, sometimes 48 amino acids uh, that are not the right amino acids, so you're changing the protein, and then you're also truncating it. So, so it's a combination of uh, nonsense as well as changing the gene in itself.